about the knowledge basis in the enterprise environment. Does this better? Ooh. Ah! Everybody's awake now. Um, my name is Bernadette Clementi. Um, my colleague is here, um, Dr. Cindy Ciccolisi. And this is a story, hopefully we'll be able to get through most of it um, in the 30 minutes that we have. It's basically about the seven years that we've been using Semantic Media Wiki at uh, MITRE. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about us, give you a tour, uh, talk about the future directions of where we're going, and some final thoughts. And so a so, little bit about us. Here is a screenshot of a wiki that we built for our department. I am a manager at the MITRE Corporation. Um, I manage a group of about 45 software developers. And Cindy is the senior technical advisor in that department. Um, you can see, for the, those who can see down here, um, some of our strengths are in experimentation, mobile computing, robotics, and social media. And we have wikis for all of those. Um, so what is MITRE? MITRE is a not-for-profit, it's a complex organization. It's a not-for-profit organization that operates FFRDCs, those are federally funded research and development centers. And what do they do? They help the government, the US government, um, handle technology better. Um, and how does it do that? Well, it's through scientific research and analysis, systems engineering, and development and acquisition. Um, our website, uh, actually I needed to get a quote from our website because after that description of what MITRE is, there's a lot of varying definitions of basically everything that we do because we have so many different business units that are all working side by side and yet it's sort of like the EU. We really do have labor movement in between all of these, these organizations with different cultures. And so the expectation is that we foster a culture of knowledge sharing and they use that language and so um, that's sort of foreshadowing for where I'm going. Um, and the quote is that we apply what we learn from addressing our sponsors' challenges to similar issues faced by other agencies. And so when you engage with one group, you really are engaging with all of MITRE. And that's good, good stuff. Um, having said that, um, MITRE sort of has a lot of different kinds of things on our intranet. So let's talk about the intranet. Uh, we have things that represent our staff. So they're, they're actually HTML pages. We have a discussion environment, which is sort of like um, Facebook. It's an ELG-based environment. And then we have project pages, which describe our projects. In addition, we've got um, customer. Just recently, we've gotten involved with trying to figure out who our what our customers need and want. And so we've built some um, portfolio pages and work product deliverables. So what I've just described to you is our IT structure at MITRE. And what you might notice is there's a big hole here in the middle. Um, and what's missing there is all of the intermediate activity, the knowledge, the evolution of ideas going from individuals or people and particularly the project work, the description of the project, not what people do, to finally some deliverables for the customer. And so over the years, what we've discovered is that um, it's all well and good to uh, know, you know, have these project pages and to have the customer missions, um, but where we sort of, I wouldn't say disagree, but where we, we tend to have a, a different view of how to describe the daily work that we do. So whether it's in a briefing or in a SharePoint site, and unfortunately, I just did this uh, today, I think we have somewhere around 30,000 SharePoint sites. That's not good. Um, and, and the reason it's not good is because it takes a lot of work to build any kind of knowledge management structure. Um, you need to model it. You need to, to, to make an investment into that environment. And um, what ends up happening is that most people end up uh, producing a, a document or a slide or, or some set of, of, of uh, deliverables. And then they'll upload them into their uh, SharePoint site. And then they're done. That's what they think knowledge sharing is not really reusable, 
um, and uh, it's very hard to find. So one of the things that we've been doing all of this time in building uh, various wikis is we've discovered that the wiki word wasn't a very good word at MITRE. Uh, the minute we used it, people would you know, glaze over, they'd say, oh, the editor sucks, or oh no, no, it's not SharePoint. I, all I know is SharePoint. And so the, some of the similar problems that Yolanda was talking about with scientists, you know, maybe one out of 10 out of 100 or some you know, very small number of really understanding semantics. Um, well, you know, if you talk about social semantics and wikis and all those words, those are all you know, a whole different discipline for most of the people at MITRE. And so um, we, we had to, to really work hard to come up with something different. And it's really not that, that different, but um, the word that seems to work well for what we've been working on is a semantic encyclopedia. We can get away with the word semantic because that still just means meaning, but then it's the encyclopedia, so a, a term that we understand from the past. Um, and so what have we been doing all this time? Uh, well, we've been building what we call now the MITRE Gestalt Framework, and it's a set of extensions and um, uh, design, design patterns that help us address that, that situation that we had in one of the previous slides, that big hole, that big area of, well, where are our competencies? We, you know, we, we try to figure out, is it a competency that we're trying to define? Is it the, the, all of the collective knowledge about a particular discipline at MITRE? Uh, are we trying to define systems engineering? All of these big terms of really the core of what we do and the reusable knowledge that we do, um, it's not, not really addressed well by IT, by our um, uh, internal IT project um, area. So what we've done is we have a farm um, and we've got a development environment. Um, it's in a single VM with multiple wikis that all share the same um, software, but they all have different databases. Uh, then we have a staging environment where we check to see how the wiki looks when we've made an upgrade or we've added a new extension in the development environment. Then we have a production environment. That's where people are actually entering in their, their content. And then we have an archive. So we started in 2006. Uh, there was a question asked, uh, what do we do in human language technology at MITRE? And I was told to go off and build a briefing. And I did, and at the end, I suggested, you know, you really don't need another person in charge of human language technology. There's about four or five heavy guns, you know, big people that are very, you know, important in that area. You don't need another person. What you do need is to pull all those artifacts together and make, you know, a community out of that. And so um, that's how Languipedia was born, and we'll see a little screenshot of that. What I'm showing you now is, um, you know, as you may recognize, the old timeline. So we're looking forward to using better timelines. Um, from Yuri uh, and a pie chart, uh, sort of you know showing the distribution of the of the article counts uh, across some of our top wikis, um, and so one of the lessons learned is that one size might not fit all. So you might look at this and say, "Oh my gosh, they built all those things! It's they proliferated silos and they used wikis to do it. That's terrible." Uh, we heard that many times. In fact, we heard it from the folks at this point in time in 2006. Uh, we, there was a, there still is, a, a wiki called Miterpedia, and it was developed by a different department in our company. And um, they really wanted everything, all pages, to just be put into that wiki. They had no understanding of semantics. They didn't understand portals either. And so it was just going to be a big collection of assortment, assorted, assorted uh, topics. And so when I created Languipedia, I kept talking to the MITRE people, people and said, well, you know, are you going to uh, you know, support portals? How are you going to do this? I'm more than happy to dump all our stuff in there. This was right before we went to Semantic Media Wiki. I said, oh, no, we don't like portals. Oh, bad. We don't like that. So from that experience, we decided that um, we really needed to focus on small groups who really understood what they wanted to do. They wanted to shape their information. And they wanted to participate. So that was the number one thing, participation. Get people to have some kind of a thought, decide, ooh, it's something shareable. I'm not going to write it in an email. I'm going to type it into a page or into a form. And so we found a number of groups to be able to do that with and discovered that really um, it's the small user community that, that can do this very well. And it's not a problem to actually have a, a lot of wikis in different areas. So here's a picture of Languipedia. Um, it um, sort of, and I'll show you the, 
the lesson learned there about iconography. At the time that we remodeled this wiki, we were hell-bent on trying to get into the, the smartphone world. And we thought, oh, well, we'll anticipate that. We'll go ahead and make a lot of icons that way. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, if, if everything's a square from a distance, you can't really d distinguish between them. And so it's really, you know, you can go sort of haywire with, with icons. Um, having said that, we're very big on icons. It's just that they have to have, you know, a distinctive outline to them. And so um, uh, the other thing for this particular group of people, um, whereas the underlying model underneath this wiki is not project oriented like some of the other more successful wikis we have, um, this Oh my gosh, five minutes. So we're gonna have to zip through this. Okay, so let's go to robotics because that's our most, um, uh, our largest wiki. It's got um, all, over 9,000 pages on robotics. And what we learned from that experience was that really you needed to have a zealot champion to be able to redirect all the business activity away from your, the customary business uh, way of doing knowledge, which is you know either writing an email or making a briefing and tossing it into SharePoint site and redirecting it to the wiki. And so that's sort of the success of this single individual. And over time, it is transferred to other individuals in that group. Um, periodic model review, very important. Um, we've gone through this wiki a number of times. As you can see, the, the skin looks a little different up there at the top. And that was, there we go, there's that, that um, lessons learned. And here are some sort of screenshots. I'm going to do them quickly. Um, I invite you all to come and take a look. We can get you behind our, our firewall and we can show you Robopedia directly. But, you know, there's, you know, a, a report form and then we've got, you know, uh, customer pages and then we've got tra tag clouds and then we've got um, our expertise pages. And so what we've discovered, it wasn't hard to, to figure this out, that small contributions from, from reports can be reflected in many different ways, depending on what kind of visualization you're interested in. Um, here's another wiki that we built for tools, um, sort of trying to um, codify the kinds of software prototypes that our company builds or tool knowledge that we have about other tools outside our company. Um, and one of the areas that we um, learned about in this particular wiki was that, um, you know, I was very against having a huge ontology right on the front page. And uh, I kept trying to move the stakeholder away from that. But he said, no, 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 we got to have this because they all map to business units. So the ontology might not make too much sense from a discipline standpoint because the organizations sometimes don't always have clear distinctions. But in this particular case, it actually was very successful because people identified, ah, that's my division. I know where I can go to put my tool because it's about this particular topic. So it's a, a weird bending and stretching of ontologies. Um, the other thing I noticed uh, uh, recently in a doing a search for something else, I noticed that Tools at MITRE, so that's the, the name of that wiki, um, that ontology is being reused to describe pre-award proposals. So go figure. It's amazing how things that you intend for one you know, purpose end up being reused for something else. Here's another wiki where um, we're still trying to figure out um, how it's going to be used, but it's supposed to be for an, a research and development um, proposal an investment area, and we wanted to make sure that people understood what the, the model was, and so we actually made a picture of it right on the front page. Um, this particular little segment is uh, integration, and you can't really see it very well, but it's integration, it's a network graph of our project data out of our um, uh, MITRE um, internal IT um, structure. So we're integrating those two things together. Um, let's see, here's a social biography, uh, bibliography site. Um, was inspired by a summer reading list that came out in a, an email, and so we decided, no, you really would like to have a wiki. And faceted navigation seems to, to work very well with that. And I'm gonna zip through one of these because it's really complicated. Ah, here's an eye chart. Now here's something that's fascinating. Um, we, I did this with a template. Oh, so sorry, so bad. Um, eventually, we'll, 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 we'll do something like this with, a, with an extension. However, however, what's interesting about this wiki is it's archived, so people aren't supposed to really find it very easily. But they come to this and say, oh my gosh, I can use this because now in one page I can see what's missing. And so an eye chart, you know, you'd think, my gosh, this fails all user interface kinds of rules. Apparently it sells the idea, an interesting idea. So, you know, sort of, you know, you want to be patient about the kinds of things you develop. Here, um, we 
um, a good idea can apply to itself, so we use it to, de to document our own develop uh, development um, efforts. Um, and I, if I had time, I'd show you the, the two um, new um, extensions that we've just put into the MediaWiki um, community. Um, we also have a showcase of a wiki that we use for testing so that we can test all the sort of the variations of the different um, uh, extensions. Here's sort of a, a summary of our portfolio, both internal encyclopedias as well as a lot of customer encyclopedias that we've built. And um, we've also built a tool that develops a, uh, renders a network graph of all of the inbound, outbound, and second order links uh, within pages in wikis, and we can talk to you about that at another point. Um, but where we're going is, okay, so you have all these wikis and you see them as, a, let's say, as mega nodes on a big graph, the, gr the enterprise being a large graph. Um, well, so here's a picture of Miterpedia. So we've waited long enough. They are no longer interested in supporting Miterpedia, so we're taking it over. So our department's going to take it from the sister department and revamp it. So we would love to hear about ideas about how to move this behemoth that's really a sort of a hodgepodge of stuff and to really make it the overarching encyclopedia where all of the wikis that we've created up until this point are chapters in that encyclopedia. And... Final thoughts. So, enterprise knowledge sharing. So the old way of doing things, I think someone called it the old world, is top down, exchange questions and answers in discussion forums. That's actually not so bad. You can do that in both the new world and the old world. Um, create word products for specific purposes, email documents, upload documents, publish enterprise stories, um, fill out enterprise forms. And so the distinction I'm trying to make is that that's the, the, the notion of sharing, I know that's probably a, a strange way of thinking about it, but what, what I'm trying to say, and maybe we could use another word instead of building, but really it's bottom up. Time is up, bottom up. So you can read the rest of the bullets. <laughs> if there are any questions, um, love to talk to you. Uh, there's a lot of material here and that was just the tip of the iceberg. So. That was great, thank you. Um, I find it very curious that you found that creating these smaller size, uh, self-contained wikis in some topic area that form a small community is a good way to incentivize people to take ownership and proceed uh, versus what, what I see in some science wikis where being part of the monster big encyclopedia, which is Wikipedia, is an incentive for people to contribute. So they'll create portals to Wikipedia that are focused on specific things like, like genes and so on. But the fact that you're adding to Wikipedia is their incentive. So I find it interesting that you've had the opposite finding. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and I think part of that is a maybe it's a publication issue or an ownership issue. Um, I don't know whether or not MITER staff get enough incentives, true incentives to collaborate. I mean, it's in the vernacular, but it really isn't. Um, Yeah, part, yeah, that's that's the other part of it. Um, because we support a lot of goofball uh, organizations, we can't really share some of those things. In fact, that's one of the reasons Languipedia doesn't have any projects. It's because it share it that work is being done for organizations that don't really want to have that get out of the uh, the firewall. So that's one of our problems. Or maybe it's an opportunity. One final question. Can you characterize your on? Would you characterize your ontologies, please? They're small. For each wiki, they're rather small. So we try to keep the number of entities, so the number of categories, very small. Sometimes below ten. Properties, Properties depends. Somewhere between fifty and a hundred, depending. Um, but the hundred part is usually when we think we've gone off the deep end. 
Um, we really try to keep things small and easy to, to understand because that's how you get participation is people need to understand, well, what opportunities do I have here to be able to, to put in to contribute? So um, once it gets too big, it's too hard, at least in this environment. So what I've said today is really good for certain kinds of environments um, and complex envi um, organizations like ours, it seems to work well.